This is a military hardened machine. This is the birthplace of the internet. This is an engineer's log. This is not, you know, Madison Avenue piece of that. The very first message that started the internet 45 years ago at UCLA was supposed to be login, but the system crashed after only the first two letters were transmitted. L O. As in, lo and behold. Hello, my friends. This is Kathy, the library hunter. As a library enthusiast and the proud Bruin, I made a video a few months back about two main libraries at UCLA campus: the Powell Library and Charles Young Research Library. And today, I'm going to show you my personal favorite, the Science and Engineering Library at Bolter Hall. Why is it my favorite? I'm gonna tell you soon. Let's go. Known as the birthplace of the internet and where countless other cutting-edge technologies took their first steps, UCLA's Henry Samueli School of Engineering and Applied Science is consistently ranked among the top 10 public engineering schools in the U.S. So a really amazing thing about studying at UCLA Engineering is that you are connected to this incredible history of discoveries. Bolter Hall Library is officially known as the Science and Engineering Library, SEL. It has an interesting history rooted in UCLA legacy as a center of innovation and STEM education. When UCLA's campus was expanding in the mid-20th century, Bolter Hall was constructed in 1950s to house the growing College of Engineering. The library is on the 8th floor, and the elevator is right here. But since we are already here, we might as well take a quick detour through the hallway and check out the famous Room of Internet. Leonard Kleinrock and his team conducted the first internet connection here in 1969, which eventually grew into today's internet. Dr. Leonard Kleinrock is a distinguished professor of computer science at the University of California, Los Angeles. He's one of the founding fathers of the internet because he introduced the idea of package switching, laying the foundation for modern computer networking. The handle is real. They took it off the old computer. So these switches are the switches that you know people used to use. Mm -hmm. um, this thing is the original router. It's the very first router ever built. And this is real. This is the machine that they use. So you can open it up. Um, oh. Yeah, there's all these diagrams and writings on how it works, but it's a little beyond me right now. This is the logbook, which records that very first message, LO. It's probably the most precious document they've got in the history of the internet, and it contains the original log in which the team recorded the events that took place in those early days. This is the only document that exists to record the birth of the internet. The big silver box next to him is an IMP, Interface Message Processor, and you can compare it to what would now be like a router. He looks exactly the same. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he's starting his 60th year at UCLA. Uh, he's been in the same office the whole time, and he hasn't changed. It's amazing. He has served as a faculty at UCLA for over 60 years now. It's actually incredible knowing he's still an active part of the UCLA engineering community that I'm also part of. The coded note at Boto Hall is a message in the pattern of the floor tiles near the southeast entrance to Boto Hall, the engineering building, spelling out lo and behold in binary code. Now let's move upstairs and check out the library. I remember sitting here at my favorite table with nice views of the campus stretching out through the windows. 
It was one of the most peaceful and refreshing moments, especially during those stressful final weeks. At the School of Engineering, there are ten different majors, but I'm a little bit biased. I think electrical engineering is the best major because that's what I went to UCLA for. From the billions of transistor chips inside our computers to the large spacecraft electronic systems, electrical engineers are inventors and designers who understand how to manipulate currents and voltages in creative ways. You can't see electrons flowing through a wire in a circuit or electromagnetic waves generated by an antenna because electricity is invisible to the naked eye. I was curious about mysterious forces that significantly affect the universe without we even noticing it. We rely on mathematics to model these types of physical phenomena. If you are a STEM student, you know what I'm talking about. You need to have an analytic mindset and be ready to chase your curiosity. You will meet challenges and puzzles for sure, but the rewards of solving them are incredible. I know this is a library tool video, and I don't want to sound too nerdy here. But just in case you are curious in what we do as electrical engineers, here is a nicely made video that explains it in a visual way.
And that wraps up our library tool today. If you want to see more libraries at UCLA or other universities or public libraries, make sure to check out my channel, Library Hunter. Leave me a comment and let me know which library you want me to visit next. See you in the library. Bye.